When you want to add radio communication to your Arduino project, you have almost certainly came across these modules. The FS1000A and the XYMK5V. They are widely available, extremely cheap and very popular. But are they actually worth your time? How do they even work? And most importantly, do they really work at all? I have some time and oscilloscope and the signal generator at hand. So let's find out. The cheapest possible option to have some kind of wireless transmissions between two electronic devices like Arduinos is what I have right now in my head. You can buy the pair. This one is called FS1000A and this one is called XYMK5V from China for like crazy price for uh, around one maybe slightly below two bucks per a pair and in theory and in theory there are great devices that allows you to transmit something from this because this one called the fs1000 is a transmitter to this one which is the receiver and it's called xymk5v this comes of course without any antenna so if you want to have any range really any range you have to buy yourself at least a few antennas i have here the helical copper wire helical 433 megahertz antenna soldered to the ant pad this requires a voltage from 3 to 12 volts uh, will work just fine on 5 volts but the range really depends on the voltage because the higher voltage the more power it emits and this works as the zero one device uh, there is a vcc and a gnd if you apply the vcc with let's say 12 volts and a gnd with a ground of course and every time a signal will appear on the atad which if you read it <laughs> backwards it's data try starts to emitting just a carrier wavelength on the three 433 megahertz on the other hand the receiver and this is only the receiver uh, requires always five volts you cannot fit it with anything else than the five volts because it will not work if you try to apply something above the five volts then it will let's say be it will not live very long of course it's also shipped without the antenna so you have to get yourself small antenna this one works slightly different way because uh, let's take a look at the pinout there is a gnd vcc you apply five volts to the vcc and the ground to ground and every time it will detect something coming on the 433 megahertz it will put one on one of those legs if you it will not detect anything on the carrier wave of 433 megahertz then it will just put zero and in theory it should work fine and unfortunately it doesn't and uh, because there are at least a few problems because they are let's say analog on off keying working you need some kind to encode your data you want to send from device number to the device number one. For example, there is the virtual wire library or radio head library. You can use them on Arduinos that will handle the transmission protocols for those things. But still, they are one way devices. This is only a transmitter and this is only a receiver. If you want to have two way communication, you have to have two pairs and handle them as well. But the biggest, really, the biggest problem with this thing is that the sensitivity uh it's not constant and uh, because if this if it does not detect an input radio signal it starts to boost the sensitivity and then at one point it just receives total crap also you cannot uh, transmit the data too slow on this because this also cannot put the one the high state on one of the output legs for long and done if i remember correctly 300 milliseconds i think I, but I will show you later in the second part of the video so not only you have to use external libraries to encode it uh, there is no way to have any really any like like check if the data is there one-way transmission is very pro problematic you never know if it worked did not work if uh, you did not get any signal for too long it starts to output you random crap it's fine to just have some fun to play build very simple very really very 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 simple device but if you want something better than my advice 
avoid their much better uh, devices like LoRa or, or, or anything like that. This is the experiment I have prepared for you. Here on the breadboard I have the FS1000 transmitter and uh, XYMK5V receiver connected. I have a signal uh, generator that will drive the transmitter to transmit some kind of crop into the receiver and the scope with two channels configured so we can compare what's the input and what's the output uh, from the receiver. The yellow line, the yellow line shows when the transmitter is transmitting. Every time we have a rising slope that means the transmitter is transmitting something and every time the blue line will also have this bump over here, the peak, that means the receiver received something interesting. Everything is off, we can only see that uh, there is input signal, the input signal with a fre frequency of 5 Hz and 20% duty cycle, so let's turn it on. It's working, more or less. If we zoom in, then okay, if we zoom in that every time the transmitter receives one, the transmitter, the receiver also outputs one because we were able to output anything. What will happen when we will, uh, let's say, disable the transmitter? You see, this is also what I've been mentioning. Every time the receiver stops receiving any radio signal for a period of time around 500 milliseconds, it starts to boost the sensitivity and instead of getting really valuable data, it just starts to pick up some noise. What will be happening when I will be increasing the frequency from 5 Hz to something bigger? At 1 kHz, let's zoom in. At 1 kHz it's still um, working quite nicely. There are no visible problems, but slowly the race time of the receiver edge is, is not flat. That means that something, let's say, it takes time, there is some capacitance. It takes time for this to start outputting anything, but this is 1 kHz. Still not that bad. At 2 kHz it's more visibly shifted more shifted at 3 kilohertz look what's happening how much the the signal receiver signal is shifted because of the some capacitance and inductance inside of the receiver at 5 kilohertz it's more or less still fine 6 7 9 at 10 kilohertz look, look what's happening the receiver signal is no longer stable artifact starts to appear and as soon as I will go to around 20 kilohertz it's more or less a nightmare. You see the receiver absolutely lost the ability to receive a proper signal. When I will start backing down then at 10, 12 my suggestion do not really go above 10 kilohertz right now but really something around 5 kilohertz is really work is real life limit even on the shortest rangers the higher you want to go the lower the frequency has to be right now we are back to the 5 hertz let's start lowering the frequency 2 hertz at 2 hertz it still looks fine at 1 hertz whoa you see whoa What's happening? What's happening? This is exactly the same case that's happening uh, when um, there is no input signal on the radio. Because as soon as the receiver is not receiving anything for around 500 milliseconds, it starts to boost the sensitivity and here, you see, the, the one, the signal goes here, goes here. Then after we can, actually, I think we can measure this one. After 400, 500 milliseconds, start to boost the sensitivity, and uh, instead of getting nice signal, we are getting those kind of thingies. That means that it, those modules cannot be really used for a button. Uh, it cannot be used as a button because if you push it with the button, then the receiver is already in high state, high sensitivity state, will pick up different kind of crap and actually will not work. The other thing is what's happening when the duty of the signal, the peak, the one, will be slightly shorter. Let me change it and let's start increasing the duty cycle of the signal. 30%, 40%, look, okay, we are here, look what's happening. Not only the strange noise, appears at the 
before the, the one goes into the receiver. Also, the strange noise appears over here. This is because the receiver cannot really hold the one of the output for too long and the max amount of time it can do it is around 300 milliseconds. Not too much, not too much. So you cannot transmit too fast, you cannot transmit too slow, you cannot really use it with the button implementation. You need some kind of filtering. How to do the filtering on the output of this thing? For example, with the capacitor, what I have here is the capacitor. This one is, how big? This is 100 microfarads. And I will just now install this thing parallel to the output and we will build a very simple very crude low pass filter hoping oh okay yeah with the capacitor at the output of the thing it's better it's better the spikes are off but still um, the raising time is visible the falling time is visible it's still not very nice but with the capacitor at the exit of xymk5v you can let's say improve the noise handling of the of the thing it won't be pretty on low frequencies but it will be working i'm Paweł Spechalski and this was hacker university thank you very much for watching and don't forget to check out this next video